Old man Woody likes the crooked cock. Yeah. I want to start with Melissa. What did 13-year-old you consider to be the greatest thing ever? Oh, man. Um, unfortunately. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, I the preoccupation I had when I was 13 was obtaining a video game console because I could not convince my mom to buy me one for like seven years before that. Which console would that have been for 13-year-old you? Well, I was trying to decide between a PS2 and a GameCube, ended up with a PS2. Good call. Good call. That's the better one. Yeah, that's the way to be. But that was, that was my life. I was like, I have to get one of those. I wasn't allowed. My mom's like, those are for boys. Really? She discouraged yeah. you from gaming because it was too oh, masculine. Yeah. Yes. Huh. She's hmm. like, no, you're going you're gonna to get sick of that. That's for boys. Boys enjoy that. I'm going to buy that for you, and it'll be a big waste of money because you're going to get sick of it in about a month. It nah. didn't happen, did it? No, my parents discouraged gaming because I prioritized it over things that mattered, like school <laughs> and real life and things like that. Yeah, that happened a little later. See, when Woody was a 13-year-old, he wanted the latest hieroglyphics tablet, and his parents said, <laughs> no, Woody, you can't have that. And he just kept at it until he got it. It was a later. Super Nintendo, and uh, the, the game that I was kind of addicted to was Zelda. And um, you, I just, I don't know if I beat it or not, but I would just play that thing forever and ever and ever. That was the. Oh, I never beat the Super Nintendo games because mom didn't understand the concept of saving and uh, that <laughs> just, just unplug the motherfucker to vacuum. And it, it's part of the reason I don't talk to her to this day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never made it to the last world in Mario 3, and I never will because of that. And I, I will hold that against her till she's dead. <laughs> yeah, I played Super Mario Brothers world. when it was new. Then. I played it when it was an arcade game. It was a mm. good one. I played it by, when I was five, so that was 1991. That's when I had my regular, my NES with Mario. I remember 91. I graduated high school that year. <laughs> <laughs> Mirka? Uh, what did 13 year old you consider to be the greatest thing ever? Oh, let me think. Well, that's when I was playing hockey like, pretty seriously and a lot as a mm -hmm. goalie. And I wanted my dad. Because you go to those hockey stores, and my dad would want to take me to, like, play it again sports or some shit where I could go pick up used goalie pads. And for those of you who aren't aware, goalie pads are expensive as shit. Like, they, they're incredibly pricey. And he wanted to get me some used pads, and I just had my heart set on this new pair of TPS pads. Still remember the brand. And they were, like, fourteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. Wow. Just for the leg pads. They were incredibly nice for the time. And I had my heart set on those. And then my birthday or Christmas, some shit came around. And I thought I was getting those. Have you ever thought you were getting a gift and then you didn't get the gift? It's fucking awful. <laughs> awful. Because you're like anticipating your thanks of like, all right, I'm going to open these. And then be like, oh, thank you so much, Dad. Thank you so much, Mom. And then You're you already planning it. what you're going to do with the thing. Exactly. You're like thinking about going and out and, and using In the them. rink this weekend. Yep, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And opened it and it was not that. It was not what I wanted. What was it? It was pads, but in a no. different color. So they didn't match. The oh color my god. Matters. The color matters. The color matters. You are like a matters. sweet sixteen girl who doesn't like the color of her BMW at this stage. But I wasn't. I didn't want a BMW. I wanted a black and white set of TPS goalie pads. Were they and used? I, yes. <coughs> hey, how do how do you how do you sell used goalie pads? No, you told these, me how they smell. These aren't like they smell. <laughs> they, they smell horrific. How do you get that out? You you don't. You just deal. Like, <laughs> but uh, these were like leg pads, so those don't absorb as much smell. Okay. But I opened it and I was just I just had to know. And looking back. I know that the look on my face when I opened them was probably enough to cut my parents to the core of like the, like just the sadness that I was emanating for not getting what I want. But uh, yeah, that's what I wanted when I was 13 and I was wholly disappointed. Mom, dad, come on. I had a similar situation. I, I wanted a Trans Am and they got me a, a, a new Chevrolet truck and I was just like, I, I, I couldn't be appreciative. 
and and that makes sense. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I couldn't be. Maybe that makes me a shitty person, but I, I had my heart set on that Trans Am. I didn't even want a new one. Uh, I, I wanted a much cheaper vehicle. Instead, he bought me a $35,000 truck, and, and that's not what I fucking wanted. I didn't want a truck like the rest of his fucking <laughs> rednecks. I wanted a sports car so I could get some pussy, and it was absurd. It was absurd. Get me that truck, and I did not want it. I... We both sound like spoiled pet. He shows up to pick. He picks me up from school. He's like, this is yours, and I'm just like... You just bought this? He was like, yeah, yeah. Just left you know, the dealership, wherever it was. I was just like, you already signed the papers and everything? <laughs> I was like, like, we can't just... Or, or, is this like the test drive we're on now? Because let's park this motherfucker and go to the used car lot and get me a fucking Trans Am. <laughs> Can I sell this back and buy three Trans Am? Right? That's what I wanted. In, in my... I, I almost wanted to be like, could you just, could you put me on the title if it's mine? Blah blah blah, and be like, and then just fucking cash that son of a bitch <laughs> in at the used car, like come back with a car. Like I don't care. I, the Trans Am was all I wanted. That's all I cared about. I wanted it so bad. That uh, and and he didn't, he didn't come through with it. The thing I was most focused on when I was thirteen, though, um, I think fourteen was paintball. I think at fourteen I got my first paintball gun, and I got really really into that. Um, but so at 13, I think it was probably hunting, and uh, at that age, it was most likely bow hunting. I think I was really into that. I was all about you know looking up the specs on different compound bows and uh, you know wanting the carbon fiber arrows and uh, or the graphite arrows and you know the I want these broadheads that open up two and a half inches wide of razor blade on impact and they're held in place with with uh, rubber bands or like no no I want the triple razor blade that that, that you know. And always just coming up with new stuff like that. I was I was really into that for a while. Uh, that's probably what I was into at thirteen was just shooting deer with a bow. I was into jet skiing at thirteen. That was my mm-hmm. thing. It. Uh, my parents had bought my brother and I a used jet ski when I was like twelve. But by the time I was thirteen, he had grown tired of it. Like it, we didn't have a trailer behind a car, so you had to like push it on this cart with a handle, kind of like. Ever see those things where you put it under a trailer so you can move it around the car lot? It was like that, but it balanced a jet ski. And we lived two blocks from the ocean, which isn't a very far push. But then pushing it across the soft sand into the water was so hard. It was like a 40-minute full effort body pull to drag that thing across the sand. And my brother, who wasn't, uh, wasn't, wasn't into physical work was just like, fuck that. I'd rather not go jet skiing. The other option was to push it like two miles to the, uh, to the boat ramp by the bay. And that was also awful. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but I was down for it. And I would go jet skiing all the time. By the time I was 13, it kind of unofficially became mine. Because I was like fixing it and maintaining it and using it every day. And he had lost interest in it. And that was my, my passion. I was all... How can someone that old lose interest in a jet ski i don't understand that <laughs> that those are the most fun things ever you was can't it not powerful frown on a jet ski it was it was plenty powerful it was an old kawasaki 440 year old at this oh, point shit. That's it, odd. yeah That's it, it, it would do the trick also i, I mean maybe uh some of the, i i was good at it um i was also into surfing at the time and water sports like i just sort of took to them really quickly and uh you know it Let's say that every time you went out jet skiing with me, you got shown up by your little brother. Would maybe that, you know, hurt your interest in it? So wait, are you that telling might me? Actually, are you telling me that when when you were out on the water, it just didn't feel natural to be aboard <laughs> that man-made craft? You wanted to be <laughs> one with the waves. That's what it was. You were drawn to it, pulled, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I guess so. Dude, I, I, I love the water so much. I was all, when we moved to Ocean City, I instantly took to the water. I would go out there. I used to, when, it, when I was a lifeguard, I'd swim with dolphins like seven times a week. Like it, it would happen all the time. And then when you swim with wild dolphins, you don't really swim with them. Like you just swim nearby and they do whatever the fuck they want. Like I would like chase them. And even though I was a good swimmer. Compared to a dolphin, I was fucking horrible. See, growing up in Missouri, I can empathize with that because I would often walk in fields with cattle. So, <laughs> <just>. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I ended on that note. I love the that word was the play. Best there it is. I've ever heard.